Hello, this is Brett from Survival Comms. I'm going to be doing a review on something that uh, they're kind of popular. I've seen several different videos out there on them. See people test them. They're inexpensive enough that I decided to spend some money to purchase it for myself. Easiest way I can put this is, is inside this package is probably the most absurd portable radio antenna ever. Without further ado, we'll open up our package here. Just came in and we'll see what we have here. Here we have the Abri 42 and a half inch dual band antenna. So let's pull this thing out of the package here and see what all the hubbub's about. Got a piece of Velcro. And it folds out to be 42 and a half inches long. It's a blade of um, feels like like a tape measure type of thing here covered in heat shrink tubing it looks like it's got a threaded retention down here looks like they've run a couple machine screws and lock nuts through this threaded stud down here to retain the element and I saw another video of one of these where someone had cut it open and there is a coil inside of here so it is a uh, base loaded antenna of some sort and we have our ubiquitous uh, Baofeng style female SMA connector at this end here and the base of our coil you can see that we're stamped here with a counterfeit part number of 12011271001 which is the short blade antenna the coil for the short blade antenna produced by Harris it's a um, 30 to 512, I believe. And this one here, of course, is marked 136 to 520 megahertz and marked 8 watts. And it's got the Abri label on this side here. And I did lift the label, and there's no counterfeit Harris mark on that other side of it there. The antenna is truly enormous, especially when it's folded out like that. And based upon its size, there's, uh, in my opinion, it's either an in-fed half-wave VHF or it could be a 5 8 wave because there is, like I said, there is a coil in the base of it. So it could be either one of those. Antenna weight on the scale is 4.5 ounces. To give you a sense of scale, I just laid it next to this old Forest Service EPH and these are fantastic radios if you can get a hold of these. It's difficult to take it all in <laughs> when you look at the thing. Uh, because, I mean, I'm having to come out here on the dining room table and back up enough to where you can actually see the entire length of the antenna. These are the items we're going to use in our testing. A Bird AT400 antenna tester. Our adapter stack, which we're going to use the same adapter stack across all of them, is a Type N to SMA female and a SMA male to male connector here and I've insulated the outside of that to build it up to add support to it and we'll go over that in a minute. Our reference UHF antenna is going to be as a standard Motorola UHF whip. Our reference VHF antenna monoband will be the Smiley antenna products 5 8 duck. Our reference dual band antenna will be the Nagoya NA771 our test receiver we're going to use is going to be a Baofeng BFF8HP, which is pretty much what most people are going to use with this uh, antenna. And then, of course, our antenna for the test, which is the Abri 42 and a half inch antenna. I'm going to add a couple of exotics to this test. The first one is a homebrewed antenna that I made years ago that's just a, a quarter wave VHF. And I have some braid right here. And basically has a counterpoise built into it and it's all soldered together and heat shrunk up and all that other stuff and I've had this antenna for years and used to use it on my FT50 and that's a uh, that works really well. In our second exotic is this uh, Gamma Electronics um, UHF antenna and these are a ground independent antenna that is uh, of all stainless steel construction 
It's uh, they're USA made. They're a fantastic antenna. They're typically used in like alarms and stuff like that. But what's cool about those is is that you can hide these things just about anywhere. You just put feed line in it, and the thing is nice and light and uh, compact. <laughs> Here's our gamma electronics antenna mounted up on the test transmitter. <laughs> the tests we're going to perform are VSWR return loss signal strength then relative receive signal strength and for that we're going to use my service monitor as a signal source. Now when doing our antenna testing I'm going to be holding the device in my hand in exactly the same location every time just like you would a portable radio and filming the results on the display and you will know whichever antenna is under test at the time and the results thereof in the video. This is our field strength test. Now, I've placed the antenna analyzer inside this plastic enclosure here on top of a tripod, and I'm going to go in the other room, and I'm going to make a transmission. I'm going to make a transmission from the exact same location every time, holding the portable radio in the position of operation. A Brie antenna collapsed. A Brie antenna extended.
Smiley 5 8 wave duck signal intermittent. Nagoya 771 signal intermittent. Survival comms exotic VHF receive. Nagoya 771 on UHF. Motorola monoband UHF. GAM antenna, UHF receive. A Brie 42.5 inch antenna at UHF. A Brie 42.5 inch antenna folded at UHF. Signal intermittent. A Brie 42.5 inch antenna. Resonator removed. Signal present. All right, let's run through these numbers real quick. These are the results we got as far as VSWR and return loss. The frequencies we swept uh, for UHF, it was 420 to 470, or 430 to 470, and then on VHF, it was 130 to 160. And the points that we were interested in and where we gathered our data from was around 145 megahertz on VHF and 450 megahertz on UHF. For those of you that do not know, uh, VSWR and return loss is just a way to express how well matched the load or the antenna is to the transmitter at the frequencies of interest. And what's important overall to look at is, is the results themselves, meaning like if you look at the Abri antenna, which was the the coil only. When you remove the blade it basically performed like a dummy load which means that it was almost a perfect match for the transmitter at those frequencies. Now that does not mean that it is an effective radiator it just means that that is the it's basically a 50 ohm load at this point right here. Whereas a very bad match would be when you folded the Abri antenna at VHF and you had a 6.20 to 1 and minus 2.7 dB. The numbers when you look at here on VSWR you want to look for lower numbers and on return loss you want to look what looks like larger numbers but in reality they're lower numbers because they're negative values. So this is a negative 8.7, a negative 14.5, and a negative 16.5. But what we can see without having to go into all these results is the Abri antenna is a fair performer as far as loads go. However, it's cut long, meaning that it tended to perform better and it wants to be tuned towards the lower end of frequencies, like around the 130 megahertz range. Whereas the Nagoya is cut a little too short, meaning that it favors the higher range of frequencies. So that's what we basically saw in this test. The Smiley antenna was an effective match at 145 to 1, and my uh, homebrew exotic 136 to 1 is an uh, effective match at the frequencies of interest. So what's germane to the video is, is that the Abri antenna and the Nagoya antenna, which the Nagoya antenna is considered to be a very good antenna, the match characteristics are very similar at these frequencies, which being the 2 meter and 70 centimeter amateur bands. Another thing we can gather from this is, is that when you fold the antenna up like this, it becomes a uh, very poor match in relation to what it once was at VHF. However, UHF, utilizing the antenna in this configuration here, doesn't have nearly the effect on the match as it does at VHF. The results of our transmit signal strength test, and these are the average values based upon three transmissions per antenna on VHF and three on UHF. And we can see that our Abri antenna performed well. It really did. I mean, it was twice as much as my Exotic, which was the second place runner up in this category. So you can see that folded up, it loses a lot of its effectiveness. And on UHF, you can see it also performed well. The um, best of breed was the uh, GAM antenna in here, followed by the Nagoya, and then followed by the Abri. So you can see that in, the, in this testing here, it did quite well. The received signal strength testing, 
Uh, really didn't have any numeric values that came out of that. It was uh, basically using what equipment I had on hand and you know you have the audio samples in the video for you to judge for yourself. So the question many of you may have watching this is, is uh, how much is this antenna going to affect increasing my communications range? Well I can tell you it's not going to double your distance. I mean it's not going to hurt <laughs> but it's not going to be something that's going to have this really profound impact on your distances you can communicate between radio to radio. If you're interested in extending your communications range in my opinion just build yourself one of these. This is my bug out bag antenna. I've got a video on how to build these yourself for a few dollars and that's some parts. It's got your feed line and everything in it. it. Weighs less than this antenna does for the entire kit and you don't run the risk of falling over and breaking your SMA connector in your radio and rendering your radio unserviceable. So in closing, what do I think about the Abri antenna? Well, here's what I think about it. I think it's incredibly impractical. Uh, it's a neat novelty, but to try to utilize this antenna and to carry this thing around with you like that, you can see it broke my radio. There's little plastic tabs that are on the uh, back of the radio itself, and you can see how those busted off. And also I broke an RF adapter uh, in testing as well because the thing snapped it off. And you have to consider that SMA connectors are very, very delicate as far as an RF connector goes. And having this much weight and also just the, the size of the base inhibits its connection to many radios. That's why I pretty much left it on this one here because it fits this radio fine. So if you're rolling with the Baofeng, this antenna will work on that. If you use a Another vendor's radio, your mileage may vary. Uh, much more uh, practical antenna that worked well, if you need a long antenna, is the Nagoya antenna. Um, they're popular and uh, they're good antennas. They, they, uh, they're durable, they're uh, flexible. I mean, I can't complain about those at all. And, you know, sometimes a shorter antenna right here is practical, or more practical for your uses, so, you know, consider that too. But, I hope this helps. This is Brad from Survival Comms. Till next time.